Mikhail. I'm Father Paisius, Father David, and I'm here with uh, my wife, Matushka Mikaela, and her sister, Roberta Henderson. And um, the amazing thing is that um, there is this history link and these two lives going all the way back to the 1800s. And um, you've both told me before about your great-grandmother called Miss Mayella. And you told me that she was 13 when they freed the slaves. And then she went to be with the Lord in 1968. So if they counted freed the slaves from the Emancipation Proclamation, that happened in 1863, which means that she would have been born in 1850. And so that means she died in 1968 at 118 years old. So I would really love to hear from both of you about this lady and what she meant to you. So just begin to think back and whatever you can remember about her, tell me. You won't go for her? I remember a lot about her. The first time I saw her, she, she always was old. But the first time I ever laid eyes on um, she wore a head rag, white head rag, on her head. She wore stack heel shoes and long dresses down to her ankle. You said, um before that she was um, Cherokee? Yeah. yeah. She was half Cherokee? Yeah. And um, so... Full and, blood. Uh -uh. Yeah. So Thelma remembers that she was full blooded and Roberta remembers that she was half. Uh -huh. But any way you cut it, she would have been on the, uh, the rolls for the Cherokee Nation. Well, Matushka, tell me, tell me some of the things that you remember else about her. How about Miss Mayo? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Never nothing bad. Generous. She helped everybody. She would hide us out from my mama when she was on one of her sprees. She wouldn't let her get us. And she, her yard. She had all the grass cut out of her yard. And every morning she'd get up and sweep her yard. And sweep the dirt. And she raised plums and apples and peaches and watermelons and greens and everything. Just, just everything. She had just a big garden. You know, like they had they they had pumpkins and they grew corn and potatoes. They even grew hominy corn wow. and potatoes. They did their own milking, made their own butter. I mean, they was just country people. They were just country people. But uh, I often wondered, this lady was, was so old, how she got around and, and do the thing that she did. I mean, she walked wherever she went. She never went to a doctor. Didn't know what a, we we didn't even know what a doctor was. And yet she's out here every morning before the sun up, sweeping all this dirt front and back, china berries every day. This is every day. And she took care of her her flowers. She had flowers too. She grew flowers too. And we had a neighbor down there, Mexican. <laughs> she had to get on on her on, on her husband because he was always beating her up and chasing her around, and she wouldn't stand for that. So that was another thing that she, she was just all around good person. It, I mean, it's just nothing. When, the, when this husband was beating up this lady, what, what did Miss Mayella do? She tried to make it to my grandmother because she knew if she made it to my grandmother, he was gonna stop it, because my grandmother always had her broom. Mm. And she didn't mind using it. You know, he, he and he knew this. And she called the police on him. Okay. Now you said that uh, you felt safe 
when when your mama was on one of her sprees. Oh, God. Tell me a little bit more about how did she make you feel safe? It, 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 it wasn't, it's what she did. You know, she said, you stay here mm -hmm. and you'll be all right. And she used to be quilting or cooking in her pot belly soul. She didn't have light, she didn't have gas. She had a wood soul and a lamp. So she made the best biscuits and that old stove. She made the best of everything in that old stove. That old stove, she quit the quilts. And she canned. Yeah, yeah, she she would can the, the fruits. She was just a good person the closest since I know what a sank was, the closest thing I ever know to a sank was her. Never heard her swear. Never saw her really getting mad at nobody. And she saw good in everybody. And she was a good person. Did she say anything about the, what sometimes people refer to as the Trail of Tears? Yes. What'd she say about they, that? that? That too. She said a lot of their people died on that trail. Thousands of them died on that trail. She said, and, and a lot of that stuff that happened, it shouldn't have happened. She said they made treaties and they broke them. She said they, she said they simply did not want them to have what was theirs. They didn't, and she said even now, uh, they're only allowed to do certain things on their own land. I remember you had shared that with me before, and so I just wanted to, you know, remind people of some of the early experiences of our history, you know, in the United States. So. And she said, she said, she said, and she said, and that is true. She said, when the white people won, it was victory. She said, but when they won, it was massacre. Uh -huh. Madhushka, you told me before some of the things that happened when people got sick, what she did for them. Can you tell us about that? Oh, when they go out in the woods mm -hmm. and get stuff off out the woods, off the trees, out the ground. They didn't make tea or make leaves and stuff. That's what they give them. You had to hoop and cough. They had a remedy for it. Sorghum syrup and castle oil. Yeah. And if you you had a cold, they make. Yeah, that's something I'm not exactly too excited about. Cow chip tea. We wasn't either. <laughs> Nobody else. We we wasn't Nobody either. Believe else me. Wasn't either. <laughs> Believe me. Believe me. We try to stay away from it. And they, they used uh. They use coal oil and smut from the stove to, like if you had a cut, like once I got my, I cut my heel, and I didn't know I had cut it, but I felt something kept hitting in my foot. And that's how, that's how I cut my foot to, it was, it went home, my mom put my foot in some cold water, she went and got her some smut out of the stove, she got some coal oil, she made a paste, and she put it out on my foot, she clean cloths, she bandaged it up. No doctor. They pull our teeth when they got real loose. Well, I was well fully grown. I said I was fully grown, married, and had my first child before I knew what it was to be sick, to go to a doctor, to go to a hospital. I had never. And when the lady asked me about a tetanus shot. I, I, <laughs> I mean, it might sound silly to her, but I'm going, a tetanus shot, what is that? Yeah. She said, you never had a tetanus shot? I said, no, I've never been sick. She said, you've never been sick. I said, I have never been sick. I have never been to a doctor. You had to go to church. And I was terrible. I mean, I hate to say it, but I was terrible. We all were on Sunday, we go to church. But after church. 
it just looked like it was snow on the ground. All the white tablecloth and all the food. Because we didn't get snow. That was every Sunday. At prayer meeting, we had a prayer meeting when somebody died. They took them to the houses and put them on the cooling board and prayed over them all night. You know, in the Orthodox Church, that's the same tradition. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> people are brought either to the home or to the church, and people pray over them. All, all, they never leave the body until the body's buried. So that's the same way it was back home, right? Why? Because so, they didn't leave the body until they got to the church the next day, and they did because of somebody there all night. You tell me some other interesting things. When you guys were little and they did baptisms, how did they do baptisms? In the creek. Okay. They put a white dress on you, tied at the bottom, and you go down in the name of the Father, come up in the name of the Son, come up in the name of the Holy Ghost. So they yeah. did it three, three times. Three times. Yeah. And that is the exact way that baptism has been done in the Orthodox Church since the first century. Really? In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. So it's, it's very interesting. The other thing you said was that after church every Sunday, they would have these white tablecloths, like you just said, spread out, and everybody would bring all this food. Um, the early Christians used to call that the agape meal. And they would have it after church on Sunday. So it's, it's really... Some of these traditions that you're talking about are very, very old. How did you guys feel? And this was in Texarkana, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How did you feel as far as safety? Did you feel safe back then? Oh yeah. Yeah. We didn't lock doors. We didn't lock no doors. Sleep back on then. your porch. Mm -hmm. Didn't have to lock no doors. Sleep on on your porch. Uh oh. No matter what no bother. We, we had our own. We had our own black little town. We had a grocery store. We had a drug store. We had restaurants. We had barbershop. Barbershop. Hairdressers. They call them. And hairdressers. And so we had a black. It was a black community. Wasn't no white living there at all. How did people make decisions when the, in the community? Who decided things? Well, if it was a, a something that had to do with the community, they got together, which they did anyway, because back then people built their own houses. And the neighbors, whether they worked or not, they would come together and they would help whoever was building the house. They would help them finish their house and then one would help with the plumbing, and then another one would do the electrician, the electrician work and all of that. So back then, we didn't have a lot of money. So uh, as I said, we grew everything. Neighbors helped each other, you know. If, if you needed a babysitter, I babysit for you. If I needed a dress made and I needed to make, you'd make me a dress, you know. we did things for, e people did things for each other. It wasn't no, well, I'm gonna charge you such, it wasn't none of that, it, it, it wasn't that. Holidays and everything, I don't care whose house you pass. You had to stop and get a plate if you didn't eat it right then. You better come on in and get, I mean, this was people being people, being neighbors. You don't have that today. And back then, families was families. Kids. You don't have that today. Kids had a lot of mothers and fathers. Right. Because if you did something, you got it, then you went on and got it again. So everybody embraced everybody again. There's, you know, one of the things that we're talking about is Truce Village. And we're trying to restore this sense of village. And it's really what you guys had when you were growing up. The exact same things. Now, I remember when I visited Texarkana with you, there was this tree. And it was, it was uh, next to a park. If I remember, it's where everybody used to gather and talk together. Is that right? 
Remember yeah. That, that, tell me about that tree. But those old men would get on there and sit and talk. They play domino. Just socializing. Did, did they make decisions under that tree, or just talk, or what happened there? Well, they would talk. And what it said to be made, they would make them. Yeah. Now, when we were, um, we visited where you were born. In Garland, Garland City, I think. Right? Mm -hmm. Garland City. Yeah. Garland City. And do you remember that when we went down there? Yeah. And uh, tell me some of the earliest memories that you have, and some of the stories that they told you about Garland. And be honest. What do you mean, be honest? Tell me everything. <laughs> it had a lot to tell. It was just it. It was a community of black people. And everybody was everybody's a kid. You could go to anybody's house and eat. If you they had clothes you wanted to wear, you go and wear. I mean, it it was just it was a community. It was, it was like everybody was family. And then we had we visited that um, we saw this big field. What a cotton field. Tell me about that. Oh, and just to take the little kids to the cotton field and put them in the bag to weigh them when they give it away to cotton. <laughs> and so they pay them down the heaven of Hana. So whatever you can do to make it say heavy, you did it. I like so, picking peaches. So sometimes they'd stick you in the sack and then after the guy wasn't looking, you'd pull you back out again? Is that the idea? Well, they dumped you. They dumped you. Yeah, you had to get out. <laughs> Hated cotton field. And then um, the there's people, there's family members that are buried down there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And because uh, I remember going there, tell us a little bit about that. We had, well, we had our own funeral home, our own cemetery, and when somebody died, that's what they were buried at. Like when my brother got killed, it was four of the boys that had that feel all the same day. They had got it executed. So they had all that feel the same day and they was all buried in the same place at the same church. It, it was it was just a good time. Mm -hmm. Now when you um, <clears throat> when you think back, let's say that a stranger came to your house, somebody that you didn't know, how was he or she treated? My mom you, took in straight people, like some people take in straight animals. There was no strangers. There was no strangers. They come, they stay, get ready to move on, they move on. Do you have any stories about that time that come to your mind? Just this one old man. I remember him. He came to the house and what it was around then. So he wanted something to eat. And whatever she had in that, she gave it to him. And then we were watching. Where was he from? We called him Hobo Jungle. That's where we thought he was from. Hobo Jungle? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because they had a, a, a jungle where the, the hobo would jump the train. Okay. And he had long white hair, long white beard. And we don't know where he went. It was like he just disappeared. I saw him once when I was here, since I've been in Kansas City. It looked like the same man. Might not have been. And he wanted food. I gave him the two cans of green beans I had, and he disappeared. We don't know where he went. I had the kids to go and look down in, in, the, in what we call it, a creek here too, and they said he wasn't down there. They, they couldn't find him. So this same man that you it think looked like the same looked man. like the same man that you saw in um, Texarkana that your mom fed 
then you went outside and he was gone and it disappeared. Then you see what looked like this same man here in Kansas City. Yeah. And he wanted some food. Yeah. And did he look like he had aged, gotten older from the same time you saw him in Texarkana? No, he looked the same. And how many years had passed? Oh, Lord. How did he? 10, 15 years. Okay, so when you when you think about this story, who do you think this person was? I didn't think about it. But I like so getting back into the Bible. I thought it was an angel. Hmm. Now, um, when you think about Miss Mayala, tell me a little about, about her faith. What did she believe? She believed in God, she and that's all she God. believed in. All the way. Tell me more about her. She had a son was a preacher. She went to church all the time, prayer meeting, and she was the, uh, the mother of the church. Thinking back on Miss Mayala, as your great grandmother, and you're the great grandmother now of, of your kids. What lessons that you learned from Miss Mayella would you like your great grandchildren to learn from you? I didn't put them into practice. Kindness. Loving everybody. You don't have no enemies. Everybody was your friend. because that's, that's who she was. Sounds like she was living what she believed. She did. She did live what she believed. That's powerful. Now, when, do you remember when she died? I was in Kansas City. I was in California. And what did you hear about that? How did she die? They took her to the dentist and they pulled her teeth and she didn't get well after that. Had she ever been to the dentist or doctor before that? No. Nope. No. Nope. Wow. No dentist, no doctor, no. So for 116, 118 <laughs> years she had never been to the dentist or doctor. They take her to the dentist and then shortly after that she dies. She had her teeth. She still had her teeth, and I ain't got mine, and I she put she had all she teeth, had but her one, teeth. But that's you know, one they pulled. She had all her teeth, and all hair was way down in. Wow. But she kept it in a ball. And it was white like that paper. Quite a story. You, you, uh, I'll tell you about our school. Okay. A little about our school. Every year we'd have some call that made a play. This one lady made all the uniform, the girl dressed, pretty little dress. And we didn't have to pay her. Every year she made our dresses. Mr. Gibson? Yeah, she would make our dresses. And we'd have a, a, a night at school. She would um, just make all the uniform. Yeah, e even the ribbon band, even even our ribbon band uniform, our pants and, and, and you know our tops and stuff. And she never charged us. Kind lady. We couldn't have paid her. We didn't have no money. We couldn't have paid her. We couldn't have been in nothing if if uh, she hadn't have made them for us. I heard you were pretty good at basketball. Yeah, I never had a basketball suit. What did, what, still, what did you do? I just could play pretty good. What position? A first swing golf, second swing fall. Yep. And I, that was a, uh, when you first told me about that, I thought that was pretty neat because now your grandsons are themselves starting to do well in basketball. <clears throat> so, tell me a little bit about that. What do you remember about that? 
I just want to play basketball. And they put, I was kind of small, but they let me on the team anyway. How tall are you now? Five feet. Five feet? Yeah. So, if somebody's not seven foot, they can still be a good basketball player. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, you, I've heard this from so many of your family members. When your mom was having trouble, you ended up uh, taking care of your brothers and sisters. And uh, maybe you could tell me a little bit about that, and then we'll talk from there about the music scene after that. But first tell me about your taking care of your brothers and sisters. Well, somebody had to do it. My mom got off on the wrong track. <laughs> she was off and running. And it was the, the, keep the kids out of the system, well, I had to get them. I had to keep them. And I, they went everywhere I went. I didn't go nowhere without them. I would take them. I had a boyfriend, and he would take us to Alton, Arkansas, and I would take the kids with me and buy them candy or whatever, stuff like that make a pallet in the trunk of the car while I'm asleep. And I'd go out there and make sure they was all right. And I did that for quite a while until the uh, welfare got involved and they, they took Ruby, Junior, and Roberta. But the rest of them, I still have them. So um, which were the rest of them? Like, Tony, Lucy Charles. For a while though, you had all six, and then yeah. they caught a hold of the older three. Yeah. Okay. So um, which were the rest of them? Emma, Tony, Lucy, Charles. For a while though, you had all six, and then yeah. they caught a hold of the older three. Yeah. Okay. And um, when when you used to go these places with your boyfriend, sometimes you'd go to like dance places and stuff like that. I've heard about this from some of the family members about you guys and this music scene. And you know, like, I remember watching The Color Purple and seeing this whole idea of the jute joint. And uh, so just begin to tell us about that and uh, whatever you remember about the music scene around Texarkana and that all period of time. Oh, we had some good times. They passed the dance and we won contests. Junior and Roberta could dance good together. They could really get out. And my dance partner was called Dick. So we had our own little partners that we would go out and dance with. And we'd win contests and we'd win money. And it was just a good time. Who were some of your favorite performers back then? I liked it all. <laughs> Did you have any favorites? Jane Brown, Sam Cooke. I didn't have no favorites. Sam Cooke was my very favorite, though. Yeah. I just loved the music. I just loved the jumping. I just loved it. Out of all the Sam Cooke songs, what was your favorite? They were all my favorites. I didn't have just one. They were all my favorites. I, I like that cha-cha and, and the walk and, oh, I just love to dance. Well, I Britta, like to swing. Well, really could do the split and never stop moving. Hmm. I mean, I, I couldn't do that, but she would do it and would never stop moving. And I won't do the, Wow. She would do the split and come up going around and around. I can never do that. I can see why you guys won dance contests. <laughs> that was something I couldn't do. Now, the what was it like inside of those those joints? Was it like um, how far away was it from Texarkana? Well, they, they were actually they were in Texas. They would they would be out in like the woods, like just okay. out in the woods, like they sent them back out in the woods, like cops didn't bother them because they saw they saw liquor and. But they stole liquor on the other side, and we danced on on the other side because kids weren't allowed over in in the 
what it was they had to liquor at. Right. But they was out out in the woods. They go out in the woods and they cut down trees and they would build these these juke joints and they have uh, <coughs> dance floors and they would have their bars and then they would and they would you know they have a jukebox. They used to have a jukebox set up in there and hey we go to town. Sounds like another era. Yes. It was it another really era. Was a good era. Now, I heard that there was a number of members of your family that were gospel singers. Yeah, my mom for one. Yeah. And my dad. One. Tell yeah. us about that. What do you? What did they tell you about that? Well, uh, they said they come up. Well, they come up in the church, singing in the church, and I think my mom could have uh, had a. a a music a c career, which I think she turned down, and uh, they would go to different churches in different different places to do their music, their gospel, their gospel music, and whatnot, and you know. Wow. The women would compete with my dad. Hold on, just a second. I got to take them out. They're they're distracting. Come on, guys. Tell you. It was a good day. I could have stayed right there and never left. The time that was just broke right there. Yeah. I wish. But if we had to move on. Yeah. Time was so much better though to me then. Even though we didn't have nothing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um now, when you, when you, we were talking about the gospel music, and uh, so your mom and your dad were both singing. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> um, they both had groups. My grandparents, they, you know, church. They yeah, all they saw. Church, and they, my grandmother was an usher. My grandfather was a deacon, and they was in the choir. And that was Mama Nettie. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like she said, my uncle, his brother was a preacher. So they had music, you know, there, and so just you know, something that was there. Sounds like a very rich life. Yeah. To me, yeah. it was. This is very important because you you said this several times. You said um, something like we didn't have money, but we, we had a good time. <coughs> we did. No. We, did, we didn't know what Christmas presents and uh, uh, stuff like that. We, we never got we never got Christmas presents. We had plenty of food and we had clothes. And you know, I never asked, we never asked for any, like kids today, they won't telling you what they want for Christmas now, and you, Christmas, we never asked for anything for Christmas, we ne and we never got anything, and it never bothered us. You know, the, there's this phrase today that we call social capital. Economic capital is money. Social capital is what it sounds like you guys had all over the place, mm -hmm. which was relationships, friendship, love. You were gardening. You you had what we yeah. call bartering, you know, where you would trade back and forth. One person would clean another and take care of the kids. Another person would make dresses, and you found a way to really do it. You know, and those yeah. are the kinds of values that are really really yeah. need uh, to be brought. Up. Well, we went to live with our auntie. We had like she buys paper dolls and everything. I never had a doll until I was grown. That was the first doll I ever had. A oh, man named David Rose lived in Denver. He bought a gaffy that doll and gave it to me. First doll I ever had in my head. David Rose. David Rose. And he brought you a, what kind of doll? Cabbage Patch Cabbage doll. Cabbage Patch doll. David Rose, yeah. He was the one that led me to the Lord in 1971. So, that was amazing. Yeah, not that way. Yeah, I didn't know you. I was 40, what was I, 40, 45 when I got my doll. I was, hey, I was up in my 50s. You were? Yeah. Now, I want to bring this forward to this time. And uh, after you reflect upon where you've come from and what's recently happened to you, I want you to, um, because just almost a week ago, 
we were sitting in this um, hospital room and many of us didn't think we were going to see you sitting here talking with us and um, you are and we're actually having this interview and I want you to think and, and share with us something that might be on your heart for the future. I wanted you to think about the fact that what you're about to say might not just be for your great-grandchildren, but also for their great-grandchildren. And what are some of the things that are really most important in your heart that you want to share with us? First thing is loving God with all your heart, soul, mind, and everything. That's the, the, the biggest joy you can have, mm -hmm. is loving God. And you know He loves you. Mm -hmm. And I would like for my grandkids to serve him. Just give him time. Because he'll be water. And that's, that's the way it is. I mean, one, a week ago or two weeks ago, whenever it was, when, whatever happened to me. And I, I, I died for a few minutes. And I came back. I know the mess I have for my family is to get together, become one in heart, not just in word, but in heart. Join your hearts together. And, and I practice the same thing for the church, not just lip service, but heart service. That's what God looking for. And that's what I want my grandkids, my great grandkids, my great great grandkids to have. Thank you. You're welcome.